So Flexbox, together with CSS Grid, is one of the most important uh, CSS layout module. And in my experience, I actually use Flexbox even more than CSS Grid. So you could even say this is the most important layout module in CSS. And so let's just quickly go over it and look at some of the most common properties and some examples of them. So with Flexbox, it's always about a parent element, which we call the flex container, and its direct child elements, which we call the flex items. So let's just uh, start with the flex container here. So just imagine that we have a uh, container here, like, like for example, a div element. And in this div element, we have three child elements, right? So these are the child, uh, the, so these are the flex items, right? So on the container, we say display flex. And when we do that, this element becomes a flex container, right? So the only thing we have to do is set the display property to flex and automatically this becomes the flex container and its direct child elements automatic automatically become flex items. So if this container has three child elements, these now become the flex items. And there is actually some default behavior, which is that these three uh, flex items, they get laid out along the same row next to each other. Right? This is actually the default layout that we get. Now let's say that we don't want that. We don't want them to sit horizontally like this on the same row. They should actually sit more like this vertically, like a column. So there's actually also a flex direction property, which we can use in that case. And we only have to set it to column to get this layout, right? So the default value for flex direction is actually a row, right? That's why um, in the default situation, it's laid out like this. We can change it to column if we want it more vertical like this. Now let's say that, uh, we actually want them to sit along the row, but they should sit in the center here horizontally. Well, we can use justify content for that. If we set the justify content property to center, they're going to be centered horizontally here. Or let's say that we still want that we, we still want them to sit along the row, but they should be centered vertically. Well, we can use align items for that. Right? So you can see it's pretty easy to uh, switch up the layouts here. And let's say that we have uh, more than three flex items. Let's say we have seven actually. So when we set the display property to flex, well, the default behavior is that they're all gonna sit on the same row, right? So we get one, two, three, four. And then the fifth one, um, well, in the default situation is simply gonna be put here. And then the sixth one is gonna be, sit is gonna be sitting here. And then the seventh one is gonna be sitting here somewhere, right? So in the default behavior, they're actually gonna flow outside the container. But if we don't want that, and we just want them to wrap onto a new line and continue there, we actually have to make that explicit and we have to say flex wrap should be wrap, right? So then the browser is gonna lay them out, one, two, three, four. And then the fifth one, well, it's pretty close, but it's just not gonna fit here. So then it's gonna move onto a new line and then the sixth one, seventh one, it's just gonna continue like that. Okay, and let's say that we want some space between the flex items and they already have a little bit of space here. So I'm cheating a little bit here because I wanna be able to distinguish these flex items from one another. So, but technically you actually have to use the, the gap, one of the gap properties to uh, achieve that. So let's say that we say display flex, right? So then we get something like this, um, but we want some space between them. And so we have to use column gap, right? So you can imagine that these columns between the flex items, that's what we specify with column gap. Now let's say that we have multiple rows like here, and we want to, we want to have some space between the rows. Well, we can use row gap, right? If we want space between the rows and the columns, we can just use gap. All right, so that's the flex container. Let's take a look at the flex items because we can also use some properties on the flex items, right? So remember, if we say display flex and we have three flex items, they're just gonna sit like this, horizontally on the same row, very straightforward here, very simple. But let's say that we want the third one, right? The third, the, the third uh, flex item here to sit um, all the way towards the end here, vertically speaking. Well, remember we actually can use align items, but that's for all of them, right? So we could say align items end, and that's gonna make them sit all at the bottom here, right? And we actually set it to center here, but could also be could could also be at the end, right? At the bottom, right? So if we if we just want one of those to sit at the bottom, but we don't want to touch the other ones, well, we have to select the third uh, flex item, and then we can use align self, and we can set that to end, 
or let's say that we want the third one to sit all the way here, right? Maybe you remember this from the header um, from our project. We, we wanted to have some elements sit all the way to the right. And so what you can do is you can select, and well, in this example, the third one, and you can say margin left auto, right? So margin, of course, is not from Flexbox. We can also use margin outside of Flexbox. But if you combine margin with the value auto, that's actually some special behavior in Flexbox. So what happens in that case is that auto is actually going to take up all of this space so that this one gets pushed all the way here. All right, so so far we've seen uh, positioning, right? So positioning is an important part of layouts. But another important part of layouts is actually the sizing of elements. So we can also size these flex items, right? We can flex them. So for example, with the flex property, we can determine um, what, what amount of the available space they should take up, right? So you can imagine on this entire row, well, th this is the available space and we can, we can decide how much each of the flex items should take up of that available space. So we can use ratios. So we can say box one should take up one proportion of the available space and box two should also take up one proportion of the available space, but box three should take up two proportions of the available space. So basically what we're saying here, box three should be twice as big as box two, right? Because it's double the amount of proportions it, it should take up and it should also be twice as big as, as box one, right? So if we look at the example then, you can see that box three is indeed twice as big as box two and, al and also twice as big as box one, right? And box one and box two are equally big because they should take up this, 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 an equal amount of uh, space, right? Right, so we can also divide up the free space among the flex items with the flex property.